You've likely worked hard on a video, exported it, uploaded it to YouTube, and then found out that they've compressed the shit out of it, and it doesn't look anywhere as good as what it looks like when you're playing it from your desktop or you know straight out of uh, your editing program. So in this video, we'll talk a bit about what you can do during the export stage to give it the best chance of keeping the quality once you upload it to YouTube. If you're new here, we have over 200 videography related videos, so lots of content for you to learn from. And if you wanna know the music or the equipment we use to make our videos, all links are in the description. Let's jump in. Okay, I'm in Resolve and I have a basic edit complete. I am ready to export, so let's head over to the Deliver page and I'll give you some recommendations on what the best export settings are. First, you wanna make sure that you have your in and out point selected. So right now our in and out is set to here. That's why the clips look a little gray. So let's go to the end. We'll hit O on our keyboard and you'll see that the render selection changed to entire timeline. If you go to somewhere in the middle, let's say, and hit O there, then you won't be selecting your entire timeline and that's why the render selection here changed to the in out range. So let's go back to the entire timeline. And then up here under the render settings tab, we have a few different presets. Obviously the custom one means you can enter your own settings from scratch, such as, you know, you can go down the format and pick your format, change your codec and enter any of the settings. However, if we scroll over, Resolve has a whole bunch of other presets and you may see this YouTube one. So let's click on this one. And this is the one you may be tempted to use or you may already be using this one. And personally, I wouldn't recommend it. I think the bitrate isn't high enough. So we can assume because the encoding profile is high that you know it's gonna be a higher bitrate, but, but it would be nice to have a little bit more control. And you know, even if we go to the uh, 4K option, you know, it just changes the resolution, but all the other settings are the same. So instead of going here, let's stick between uh, these options here. So the first option I would suggest is ProRes. Now this is gonna give you a massive file size. However, ProRes is a finishing codec and it's gonna give you the highest quality out of Resolve that you can get. And this is an industry standard codec. You know, when we are working on our commercial projects within our video production company, most of the time when we're delivering our files, we're delivering in ProRes just because, you know, because our clients and, you know, marketing agencies in general often request that type of file. But again, it makes extremely large file sizes. So I would only suggest doing this if you have a lot of hard drive space, but YouTube will be able to upload this file and uh, process it and this will be a great option. So before I give a second recommendation, I do wanna note that if you're in the studio version, you'll likely have this, or if you're on the Mac version, you'll likely have this, but if you're on the Windows free version, you may not have ProRes. In that case, you'll just have to skip ahead to the next option that I say later in this video. So for the ProRes preset, make sure your format is QuickTime, and you wanna set it to 422HQ. This means high quality, or if you want to export in the full bit depth that your footage was shot in, then you can go to 4444. However, YouTube will not be able to display the full color bit depth. So I would suggest if you're just going to YouTube to stick to 422HQ, or if your camera doesn't shoot anything higher than 10 bit 422, this is uh, the option you'd want. All the other settings should be good to go. Just double check that your frame rate is correct. And like I said, upload this file to YouTube and since it has such a massive bit rate, it's such a large high quality uh, file format, YouTube will be able to process it and you'll get a high quality upload. So the next option is H.264. And for several years, this is what I was using. Under format, I would change it to MP4. Make sure your resolution matches your timeline and the same with your frame rate. And then in this next section, we'll keep the quality to automatic and we'll make sure that the encoding profile instead of auto is set to high so that it matches the YouTube preset. However, in this section under uh, the H.264 preset, we have multi-pass encode. So this is an option that we don't have here under the, uh, the YouTube preset. So we wanna make sure that that is enabled. And essentially what this does is it does a second render of the exact same uh, timeline, but it only creates one file. Now that does take additional time. However, if you have any fades or darker spots where there's lots of shadows, like let's say here, 
Enabling multipass in code will render those sections a lot better and you'll get a much cleaner export because H.264 highly compresses your footage. So if you're not multipass encoding your footage when you're using H.264, that may be a reason why YouTube isn't uploading your footage in the best quality. And this is the preset I was using for years. However, in the last about year or so, I've actually switched to H.265. And the reason is, in the past, YouTube would not allow H.265 uploads. However, they do allow it to be used now, and H.265 is a much more modern codec. And while it is a little heavier on your system, it's a significantly better codec. And if you're not familiar with H.265, it's basically like the upgraded version to H.264. And the best way I can explain it is it gives you the quality of ProRes with file sizes smaller than H.264, which is of course pretty amazing. So if you're running a production company, you know, you'll probably stick with ProRes, but for YouTube, I would stick with H.265 now. So make sure your format is QuickTime or you can choose MP4. And when you do that, you might have to go back to H.265, so make sure that is selected. Confirm that your resolution and frame rate is good. And then further down, it has by default multipass encode selected. And, you know, I am a fan of that, so I would recommend keeping that on. And then, of course, you can name your file, choose a location, and then add it to the render queue, and you are good to go. That's the file that you can upload to YouTube, and it should give you higher quality results. All right, that's how you can export videos to give them the best chance at retaining the quality when uploading to YouTube. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos from us in the future. We have over 200 videography related videos, so lots of content for you to learn from. And if you want to know the music or the equipment we use to make our videos, all links are in the description. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.